Here I am at the Chardin Botanical Gardens in Brussels. I decided to come here to talk about the black and white photography because I've been walking around the city all day and uh, this is a nice place to rest a bit and you have some nature and some trees and stuff around. There's a tree, uh, tree, yeah, there's a tree also, but there is a road right there where there are lots and lots of cars. And uh, let's start talking about the black and white images and why I decided to talk about black and white photography. I came across today a photographic studio called Baxton Studios and it makes images with the old style, black and white of course, in big cameras and let's start with that, let's see what it looks like inside that studio. There was a photo exhibition also, but let's start with that. Oh, this looks cool. Let's see what it is. Oh, look at that old camera. That is pretty old. And some really nice portraits. Now oh, this is the studio. Real old school stuff. I just love it. I love this kind of stuff. Look at all that vintage lenses. And did you know that all these lenses could be used on an Olympus camera because you, you will probably have a adapter for these lenses. Wouldn't it be cool to use one of those? brass colored lenses for your portraits. Wasn't that cool? Yeah, I really enjoyed the place. And uh, color photography is the norm of today. And we all, we all take color images and with digital most of us take only color images but if you have taken black and white images with your digital camera please let me know in the comments down below and uh, it's actually quite easy to make images in black and white with with your digital camera and stick around and i'll show you how and yes it's so much easier than what it used to be with the dark rooms hassling uh, i wasn't never really fan of the dark room but I've done my share, so that's why I really like making images digitally nowadays, and especially uh, black and white images digitally, because it's so much easier. And, and another question in the beginning of this video, have you ever done images in the dark room? It's really easy with all of those cameras to take images in black and white. You just have to set the picture mode to monotone or monochrome. But before we start talking about how to set up your camera and how to make those settings for excellent black and white images. I want to talk about why we, in the first place want to make images in black and white. The first thing of course is that you can get that classical look because the classical look comes of course from the iconic images that we have seen from the 50s from the 60s that were usually made in black and white. The color imaging came only in the in the 70s. And the second thing is that color images can be really distracting and sometimes it might uh, with black and white and with nice lighting, you can concentrate on exactly the same thing. The colors does not make your uh, eye wander in the in the image. Black and white image with the with the different grayscales can lead your your view a lot better than some colors. Like a red color in a in a scene immediately attracts your attention. But with black and white, you can control it so that there aren't any trust. <laughs> but with black and white, you can get rid of those distractions in your image. And the third thing is that a black and white image can pop up from the vast amount of different color, different color images. That if you see a black and white image in, let's say, in your Instagram feed, that might pop up a bit because you only see these saturated colors nowadays, for example, in Instagram. But if you put a black and white image there, it might pop up and get some more attention. And before we get into the settings, let's look at some black and white images that I took here in Brussels. What was your favorite image? Please tell me in the comments down below. Let's 
go to another place. Spark was actually quite, quite small. But it was a nice place. But let's head to the town. And a great thing about mirrorless cameras is that you see what you get, so it's a kind of like a Vusivirk. If you have a black and white picture mode in your camera, that's what you see in your view, in the view in the viewfinder and in the LCD. And that is really great because that helps you to understand what the image will look after you've taken it. Or actually it tells you before you've taken it. You don't have to jimp at all because you know what you get when you look at the EBF or the or the LCD. There are actually two ways of setting your camera or your Olympus camera to black and white. The first one is to use the art modes. I personally never use the art modes. Of course I've tried them but I don't really like them because uh, they kind of ruin the image. I want to uh, or I'm more of a friend of a classical image and if I want to ruin the image then I want to do it myself in post. So the better way to do it is to use already mentioned monochrome or monotone picture mode. The settings that can be changed are sharpness, contrast, color filter, monochrome color and gradation. The easiest way to get to the picture modes is to use the super control panel and choose the monotone or monochrome from there. And if you use the only workspace software then you can see these uh, settings in your images. But if you use the Lightroom image uh, software then uh, you only see the color version of the image and the the settings that you have done from the picture mode does not show. So it would be wise to use the Olympus workspace in this case. And also if you have shot bulk uh, color images you can uh, set the same uh, settings as you have set in the camera from Olympus workspace. So if you already have some black and uh, I mean color images you can convert them into black and white with uh, Olympus workspace software exactly the same way you can do it in camera. And I think that's one of the advantages of using the Olympus workspace image editing software. I would not touch the sharpness. I always leave it to zero. Contrast is a matter of a taste. I usually like to have it a bit more contrast in my black and white images. So I will set it to be plus one or sometimes plus two. It gives the image a little more punch. I will talk about the color for just later. The next setting is monochrome color. There you have options like sepia, blue, purple and green. It will give a slight tint to the photograph. Let's see what the different colors look like. The gradation is interesting. There you can choose from auto, normal, high key and low key. Normal is quite self-explanatory. It makes a normal looking black and white images. Auto will detect what the scene looks like. The high key setting will make your image brighter and the low key setting will make it darker. This is a very good way to change the mood in your photographs. The last setting, the color filters, is the most interesting one. Back in the days when film was used for black and white imaging, filters were used a lot. The filters changed the color, or the, not the color, the filter changed the uh, black and white tones. So to have a red filter you would uh, darken the sky and you might have an orange filter to darken the sky. You had a blue filter for, for male portraits, then you might have a green uh, filter for smoothing up the skin. And the same filters apply here also when you use them. And these these uh, filters are really, really important to, to understand how they work. But let's talk about that for a while. In Olympus cameras you can choose from four different filters. You have the orange, you have the blue, you have the red and you have the yellow. Yellow is a very useful if you want to have a slight contrast or slightly increase the contrast in your skies. When you have a blue sky and white clouds then the yellow will increase that contrast a bit. And I would use that filter as my default filter. And orange filter will reduce haze in your images. So if you're making a telephoto uh, images from, from a far away distance objects, then use the orange filter. And red will dramatically increase the contrast on the sky. So you, if you want a really dramatic skies, use the red filter. And green is very good for portraits. It will improve your skin tones. And as I said earlier, the one that I used to use for male portraits was, was blue, but the blue filter is not included in Olympus camera. So if you want to use a blue filter, you need to have a separate filter to screw on your uh, lens. But like, let's look at the samples, how those color filters work.
As you saw, it's quite easy to make black and white images with your Olympus camera. And have you tried the different uh, black and white modes or picture modes? And have you tried the different filters? Please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching and bye for now.